Hawthorne. Make these little berries. These are the parts generally commonly eaten and utilized. Very red. Like little hearts. <laughs> Some pretty nice, fairly bland, bland flavor, which is pretty nice after some of the stuff I've been eating. It's been a little intense lately, but these are really soft. They go down really easy. A little little hearts they look like little hearts they're great for the heart all kinds of antioxidants going on in these that help the blood flow to the heart and help open up blood vessels all kinds of stuff mm. this is one of those curious things in nature some things like a walnut's really good for your brain it looks like a brain you bite into a carrot it looks like an eye it's good for your eye Hawthorns, they look like little hearts. They're great for your heart. That's a huge thing. Antioxidants, blood flow, lowering blood blood pressure and strain on the heart. <laughs> and allowing it to use oxygen more efficiently. I can feel that. It's like I'm actually getting those breaths. It's good. So these, they're a curious tree. They're native to Europe. It's kind of somewhere between a shrub and a tree. It's getting a little dark, kind of hard to see. It's a shame, these are a really nice color. They're turning nice color. They've got these strange leaves. They're like multiple lobes, deeply lobed, I believe, almost to the midrib, almost like little hands. We got a couple different kinds. These are a bit bigger and darker. Kind of hard to see. These were another that were uh, are quite linked with the fae. Kind of a magical plant that a lot of people wouldn't cut either when it came up where it comes up kind of grows there. Um, yeah, it's a shrub or a tree, dark brown bark with the orange cracks in it and it's gonna make these really nice little white petaled, five petaled flowers because it's in the rose family, the rose ACA family. So it's got the five petaled white, petaled, numerous stamens, one style, Rose family. And I guess they're hermaphrodite flowers. Pollinated by midges and bees and stuff. And then eaten by birds. It's pretty cold and wet out here in Oregon. Mid-November, late November, I guess. And so these are still loaded with fruit for the birds. And for the people, which is pretty cool. So it's one of those things that people like them for is a late, kind of a winter food for either the people or the birds or the whatever. Birds or people too. It's spring flowers, late berries.
And so apparently even these little interesting shaped leaves are edible in the spring, especially when they're uh, when they're young enough that you can just eat them in a salad. And often when you pick the berries, they like to come off in a clump with the leaves on there. And so sometimes they're used like that, I believe, with the, the leaves and the berries together. And they kind of want to be used like that. It seems like good, clean, hot firewood was used to mark sacred wells in Britain. And there's a... Uh, there was like one at Glastonbury thought to be the staff of Joseph of Arimathea that he planted, which is now cut down a couple times. Um, Serbia and Croatia, they used it to keep away vampires and other creatures of the underworld. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of got some different magical associations in different cultures and is sometimes called the mayflower, may tree, maybe that's where the maypole, was it originally one of these? I don't know. Uh, either way, it's a Roman goddess who was the mother of Hermes that it's associated with in that culture. A fairly magical tree, and often, sometimes when you pick them, these haven't, but some of them, they'll have these little white bugs that are just, they're such little fairies. Very interesting. It is a tree of the fae, a medicine of the heart. Good one. Solid needed it. Thank you. Thank you.